opportunities after running an XLR probably all the way down to the fence. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know someone who does that. It's just if you're a pain in the ass, yeah. Oh, mate. Honestly, I would not be running, you know, 20, 25 feet of XLR. No way. Check, check. One, two. Plume Park. Round three. Yep. Nice.
a sizzling Sunday afternoon here on the Central Coast, setting the scene for match week three of NPL New South Wales men's competition. It is, of course, the Central Coast Mariners Academy playing host to Hills United. Pete Pryor with you on the call this afternoon, live and exclusive as always to YouTube. Pleasure to have your company as always, of course. Hills United make the short trip, or the relatively short trip, up the M1 this weekend. Coming off the back of a narrow 2-1 defeat last weekend at the hands of fellow academy side Western Sydney Wanderers. Yu Okobu scoring late in that one, but it wasn't to be. Both sides, in fact, coming off the back of defeats last week. It was 10 minutes of madness in the Mariners' clash against Arthur Leichhardt down at Leichhardt's Oval. That really did the damage. They pulled one back in the second half through Lucas Smythe. That one finishing 3-1. The Mariners, in fact, looking for their first three points of the season here in round three. Both sides looking to get back to winning ways. Let's take you through how each of the sides line, lines up ahead of kickoff here at Bloom Park. Of course, starting with the hosts, the young Mariners in goal returns number 40, Dylan Pariah Cullen. Number two will be Michael Paragalli. Number three, Cher Deng, will be partnered at the heart of defence by number four, Andre Parks. Number seven, Mate Bulsek. Number eight, Lucas Shikluna. Number ten, last week's goal scorer, Lucas Smythe. Number 11, the only other goal scorer this season so far for the Mariners, Don Neon Guru. Number 16 is Prayak Tapa. Number 25 is Ben Mewitt. Rounding out the starting 11. Expect him to play alongside Lucas Smythe. Up top will be number 27, Bailey Brantman. The substitutes for the Mariners Academy this afternoon. Number 30, Daniel Vickers. Number 6, Jordan Small. 12, Tay Headley. 13, Yanni Nassis. 15, Amponza Antwi. 33, Alex Contunas. For the away side this afternoon, Hills United. In goal, of course, the ever-present number one, Ryan Woods. Number four, there will be no strangers to these parts here. It's Brian Jamba. Number five, Daniel Petkovsky. Six is Isaac Hovart. Number eight, Owen Montfort. Number nine, as we said last week's goal scorer at you, Akubu. Number 11, Anthony Frangi. 17, Caleb Jackson-Brown. 19, and captain, of course, Glenn Kelshaw. 24, Sunday, Yona. And 26, Thomas Marco. Substitutes for Hills United this afternoon. Number two, Raina Smile. Number 10, Jamal Belcardi. 12, Jordan Lane. 18, last year's top goal scorer in the Football New South Wales League One men's competition for Hills United, Mitchell Smith. 20, Thomas Lopez. And 31, William Lucas. The action begins this afternoon. Your referee, Danny Horstead. Will be the Mariners to get us underway. Their traditional... Yellow and navy kits. Hills in their change strip of white. <laughs> Whistle blows and away we go. As signaled by referee Danny Horstead. Mariners kicking from right to left on your screens. Immediately going back to Pariah Cullen. Long searching ball for Lucas Smythe. Lost it momentarily there, did Smythe. He was perhaps expecting Sunday on to be playing a little bit higher than he was there. Or just running out of play. Here's Pulsek. Good turn from Pulsek as well, finding Smythe. Kluna. He's taken off his toe by Frangi. On the way back to Ryan Wood now. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Go, go. Forced that one into the stands here at Plume Park. Go, 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 go. 
Roberts. Smyth. He had three Hills players to company. It was just one too many, perhaps. Back with Kurt Zang. He'll utilise the feet of his custodian, his goalkeeper there, Pariah Cullen. Mariners, as they so often want to do, playing out from the back again. Shikluna. Forward it goes. Lucas Smythe looks to roll off the challenge of Montfort. Clipped in, searching for a runner at the back post, which never arrived. Kluna stealing in ahead of Yona. Rising there is Scherzeng. That's a good header. Finds Brunkman. Yusek. Tapa. Challenge on Tapa from Brian Jamba there. Just going through the back and might as well have a free kick. Halfway into their attacking half. Grantman and Chikluna in close consultation as to who will take this. Will it be the left foot of Grantman? No, yes. Chikluna just running over this one. Grantman hanging one up towards Churdang. Run out the back. The Mariners with a chance to recycle it here. Well, instead, running out of room. Not far byline. It will just be a goal kick at the end of it. Here's Grantman. Looking for Shikluna. It's stolen away from him by Caleb Jackson Brown. He'll have it back as well, Jackson Brown now. Skips past a couple of challenges. That's handy footwork from the number 17. Now, Cal Shaw has Sunday Yona in front and looks to. Play one in behind for Yona. There he is, one on one with Mewitt. Wants to isolate and drive at his fullback here. And it's well defended from Ben Mewitt on debut today for the first grade sides. At the expense of a corner, though. post delivery from the corner, swinging in, headed clear off the near post and Dylan Bryant, Gullen giving a big shout and clearing a couple of bodies out of the way to get on the end of that one and clutch it to his chest. Mariners once again looking to play their way out. Well, the ball's a little bit behind Shikluna there. He's alert to it though and now he's got a bit of grass to stride into in front of him. Here's Mate Busek. Now Don Neonkuru. Building nicely this for the Mariners. Still Neon Kuru. Little flick around the corner for Bielsek. Blocked by Brian Jamber and he will retrieve it as well. Decent little passage of play that from the Mariners. And Sher Deng just holding up Sunday Yona. Halting any potential counter attack for the away sides. Petkovsky. Owen Montfort. Brian Jamba is being pecked back there by Tapa. Shikluna through the back of Jackson Brown. Referee says advantage, play on. The advantage ends on halfway. Back with Bailey Brantman for the Mariners now. And the Mariners looking to play their way through the half press of Hills United. That's a handy looking ball from Shikloon up. It's, it's Petkovsky first on scene for Hills United. Alert to the danger 
He had to be as Lucas Smythe was really nipping at his heels there. Brantman for the Mariners again. Trying to skip around Thomas Mako. Will win a throw instead. Ali Brantman, who's had some experience with the Mariners A-League sides, both the AFC Cup and the A-League competitions now. You do? He's overseas. The under-18 Australian side as well. In the pre-season, scoring a couple of goals against Denmark and France as well as Proving to be a very handy player. Speaking of handy players, here's Lucas Smythe. And now Neil Crew. It's just a bit behind him, though. Hills this time able to play out. Caleb Jackson-Brown. And it's a good-looking ball to release the teammate there as well. Isaac Hovar was striding forward. Couldn't quite pick the pass. Well, get another go at it here through Kelshaw. Slide roll ball for Sunday Yona. half assed it appeals as Sunday Yona hits the turf. Referee uninterested. It's a loose pass, though, from Shikluna. Kelshaw. Caleb Jackson-Brown back to goal, now able to turn and hang one up towards the back post. Dylan Pryke, Cullen was always favourite to get there, and get there he does. Seventeen years old, the Mariners Gloveman. Six foot six or six foot five. The tail of the tape there as he's forced to play his way out and does so confidently. Turned over by Mewitt though. Lucas Smythe again defending from the front, applying the press to Kelshaw. Kelshaw using all his experience and it's up all the way back with Ryan Wood and now Mako. Good looking switch of play as well as Kelshaw has got a bit of room on this near touch line. Can't stick the pass though. Cher Deng easily able to nip in. And again, it's Lucas Smythe pressing Owen Montford. Giving him a real puzzle to try and figure out there. He wins the throw though, does Montford. Jusek. Oh, great feet as well. Finds Shikluna. Deng. Mariners turn to look to string a few passes together. Head up. Always scanning is Shikluna. And he finds Smythe. Can't quite roll away from the challenge again of Montford, though. It's going to be a fascinating battle between those two. Here is Smythe. Kelshaw with a fantastic recovery challenge to block the shot there. Lucas Smythe proving a real handful up top today, but here come Hills United. It was Marco breaking forward, and now Frangi on the far touch line is offside. No real opportunities of note. That's half chance for Lucas Smythe just moments ago here. Probably the closest either side has come in this opening 10 or so minutes here at Plume Park. Last time these two sides met was back in 2022 in the Football New South Wales League One men's competition. It was 3-0 in favour of the Mariners on that day as well. Good little first-time ball from Smythe, finding Brantman. Smythe, I think, realised that he might have just gone a fraction of a second early there. He's always looking over at the linesman. Flag never went up, but he never interfered with play. Positive signs, those two, though, looking to link up. Brantman and Smythe. Here's Tapa. Back with Parks. Andre Parks, another one who's been called up into a couple of 
Mark Jackson's extended squads to the Mariners' senior sides. Sweeping ball towards Brunt when it's easily defended, though. By Petkovsky. And now Sunday Yona's managed to get in behind Ben Newitt here. Plenty of room for Sunday Yona to try and fashion something. Pulls it back across the face, and it is. The game's opening goal. It was Sunday Yona who broke down this near touch line here. And Anthony Frange, he makes no mistake from that kind of range there. Plenty of time to pick his spot and dispatched it expertly. Past Dylan Bright, Cullen, there it is. Hills United who take the lead inside 12 minutes here at Plume Park. Rapid counter-attack from Hills United. It's the first goal they've scored against the Mariners. In about three years. Mind you, they didn't play against each other last season, so... It's the third time this season the Mariners have fallen behind in as many matches. Up to them to respond now. Here's Mewitz. He looks to stride forwards. Prayag Tapa, Shikluna. Well, his pass is straight into the legs of his central midfield teammate there. Bit of a cheap turnover in all honesty. Montford just stretching to keep that one in there. Does win the throw at the end of it. Here's Bielsek. Good first time ball to find Brantman as well. He's... Ball around the corner is straight into the head of Owen Monfort. He's been solid in this opening 13 and a half minutes here at Plume Park at the heart of the Hills United defence. Isaac Hovar just running out of room on that far touch line and the Mariners will have it back with Brantman on halfway. Manages to turn around the challenge of Jamba there and fashioning a chance here for Lucas Smythe in behind. Lucas Smythe rattling the woodwork. And Busek unable to apply the finish from the follow-up. It was an awkward height for the Mariners, number seven. And it came at him awfully quickly. The effort from Lucas Smythe came absolutely cannoning back off the woodwork there. Fantastic ball and... Endeavour from Bailey Brantman to pick out Lucas Smythe in the first place. Rolling away from the challenge of Brian Jamber on halfway. Wonderful ball as well from Brantman. And the Mariners just a matter of inches away from pulling level here at Plume. This game just sparking into life somewhat. For a bit of a cagey opening 10 minutes or so. Here's Tapa. Mewitz, Busek. Was under immediate pressure and the Mariners being forced back. Churdeng unable to play the pass through the press there and fouling Sunday Honor at the end of it as well. Certainly feeling the after effects of that one. It's Sunday Honor. Brian Jamba with an opportunity to put something into a dangerous area here. Well, Glenn Kelshaw is interested as well. Will be Kelshaw to hang this one up towards the near post. And the flick header from Frangi. Had Pariah Cullen half interested. The young goalkeeper confident that he had his angles correct. That one 
floated harmlessly over the crossbar in the end. looking to, well, I was about to say, looking to show off his range of passing as well. The Hills goalkeeper. That's straight into touch, though. Couldn't quite pick out Sunday Yonna on this near touch line. Who's been busy? The opening stages of this contest. Of course, got the assist for the solitary goal so far in this one. Some great work. On the near touchline to pick out Anthony Frangi. Lucas Smyth's just gone down on halfway. Might have just lost his footing there. Brian Jamba. Patkovsky. Raking crossfield ball in the direction of Kelshaw, who strode forwards. His nod down was in the direction of Sunday Yona. He's again down on his haunches here. And he's indicating that he might not be able to continue Sunday Yona, and this would be a big loss for Hills United indeed. He said he's been super lively on this near touchline in the opening exchanges of this contest. Yep, the referee is waving on the physio. And they are going to be readying a substitute here. Hills United. I bet both sets of players will look to take this opportunity as well to take a quick breather, get some fluids on board. As we said earlier in the broadcast, it is a really sizzling Sunday afternoon here. One o'clock kickoff at Plume Park. About 29 or so degrees down at ground level. It would certainly feel like all that and more on the pitch at the moment. Nice breeze rolling through, though, here on the Central Coast, which definitely takes the sting out of it a little bit. Plenty more action, of course, this afternoon in NPL New South Wales men's competition as well. Three o'clock, we'll see fellow academy side, Western Sydney Wanderers playing host to Rockdale, as well as Wollongong Wolves welcoming St George City to the Wolf Den. And then 4.30, up your Leichhardt playing host to Manly United as well. The focus remains here, of course, the solitary one o'clock kickoff for your Sunday afternoon. If you are just tuning in, of course, it is Hills United who have that slender advantage over the Mariners Academy at the moment. The Mariners went close. It's moments later through Lucas Smythe, rattling the crossbar. Hills looking to add a second here. Sunday Yona able to continue. Good looking ball for Kelshaw. Cho Dang defending stoutly at that near post. It's fizzed across the face as well from the Hills captain. They'll have a uh, they'll have a corner for their troubles. Plenty of movement in the area. A little variation on the corner here as well. Oh, it's one straight off the training ground. The back heel from you. Finding Kelshaw. Mariner's able to turn it behind again for another corner. 
This time it will be Isaac Hover coming forwards. Perhaps just to give an alternate angle, alternate approach here. The left footer. So it's hung up a bit deeper, but it's straight into the hands of the big frame of Dylan Perai Cullen. Wasn't even at full stretch there, and I think he caught it above the crossbar. Impressive wingspan. Parks. Twisting around the attention of Hills United number nine. Looking to play diagonally through the press now. Matt Mewitt, I should say. My apologies. Cho Zhang didn't quite get the connection on the pass that he might have wanted there. Park's able to recover it, and so maybe just on a bit of a different wavelength to his centre-back partner there. Threw his hands up in the air as soon as he made the pass. Realising that maybe he didn't get the direction that he wanted. Maybe caught in two minds. It's a dangerous place to be. Here's Brian Jamba. Caleb Jackson-Brown takes it all the way to the byline. Back with Yona. And again, just floated straight into the hands of Dylan Pariah Cullen. That's a comfortable take for the young gloveman. Chirdang will carry this forward. Mewitz. Yusek just turning straight into trouble there. And Hills with another chance here through Sunday Yona. Still Yona. Pariah Cullen had to be sure. Down quickly to his near post. Turns it behind for yet another Hills United corner. Well, they're not only up on the scoreboard, they're certainly up on the corner counts as well. Hills United at this rate will be into double figures before the half time whistle goes. One's a bit further out towards the head of Frangi, the goal scorer, of course. Behind in the ends. And referee Danny Horstead signals that's about the first half of the first half done. We're going to have a drinks break here at Plume Park on account of the heat. Match commissioner taking the wet bulb reading pre-game. As we said, it's certainly be quite sapping out there. We've had showers on and off here on the Central Coast for the last few days. And a bit of overhead cloud as well, really trapping that humidity in. Both sets of players, I dare say, would certainly welcome this opportunity to take some extra fluids on board. Of course, the round kicked off yesterday in match week three of the New South Wales NPL men's competition with an absolute bang. Sydney Olympic with a demolition job over Sydney United at Belmore. Six goals to nil. Absolute walkover in the end. It was, in fact, Hills United who beat Sydney Olympic in round one. In what was viewed as perhaps the shock of the round, really. Really promoted Hills United, of course, having finished atop the Football New South Wales League One men's competition in 2023 in that automatic promotion spot. They look to renew their rivalries with the Mariners here as we're back underway after that drinks break. We said it was 3-0 in favour of the Mariners last time. These two sides met towards the tail end of the 2022 League One men's season. The reverse fixture down at Lendon Stadium. Also fa finished in favour of the Mariners, I should say, by two goals to nil. Lockie Bayless 
doing the damage with a brace on that day. He's now found his way up to the Jets A League squad. No one in the Mariners squad today would have uh, taken part in either of those fixtures, in fact. The only two players who are currently registered with the Mariners MPL squad who would have taken part, the first grade indeed anyway, would have been uh, Sash Kazevsky and Nicole Duarte, both currently in the final stages of recovering from a couple of injuries there. Sash Kazevsky, of course, not far away from his, or from his return, I should say, from an ACL injury suffered last season. And as I dare say, would certainly welcome back the experience of players like Kuzevsky and Nicole Duarte as well. Both players with substantial experience at NPL level and, of course, at A-League level as well. Dan forced all the way back to Pariah Cullen once again. Parks just clipping one out to the far touch line. It's well done from the centre back to find Paragalli. It was immediately closed down though by Thomas Mucko. Paragalli again being forced back by Caleb Jackson Brown. Been floating all across that front third this afternoon has Caleb Jackson Brown. That really fluid in that front four. Referee Danny Horstead unmoved by the appeals for the free kick, which further incensed some of the Hills United faithful. This tapper. Shodeng Parks. Shakluna. Brantman, who dropped deep into midfield to get on the ball a bit there. Bjorsek. Paragali. I think the pass was intended for Neon Kuru. Went into that wide space there, but Neon Kuru was... Dropping deep to offer a bit of a shorter option there. Just, again, caught on different wavelengths. Mewitz it's tracking back to great effect. And taking that off the tail of Sunday Yona, who seems to have recovered from that injury scare earlier in the first half, which is good news for Hills United. Clipped over the top in the direction of Lucas Smythe. Still Smythe trying to force the issue against Petkovsky. Cut back for Bjorsek. They want a handball here, the Mariners. They'll get a corner for their troubles instead. The shot from Bjorsek, well, it looks like the hands were fairly well down. And I guess what could be best described as a natural position from the Hills United defender. No further complaints from any of the Mariners faithful there. I think if memory serves me correctly, this is in fact their first corner of the game. Shakluna across to take. This is hung up towards the back stick. Ryan Wood can get there and he's turned home and he's up there. Bailey Bradley, who levels proceedings here at Bloom Park. Ryan Woods came out to try and claim the teasing delivery from Shakluna. Couldn't get a hand on it. And Bailey Brantman benefits. His first goal in the MPL for season 2024. And the Mariners are absolutely thrilled to be back on level terms here at Plume Park with about 15 or so minutes to go until the interval.
Well, Shikluna will happily take the assist, I think, if it falls his way. Back to the drawing board for Hills. They immediately want to get on the front foot here. No way through the Mariners' midfield on that occasion. Instead, Kelshaw will bypass the midfield and go long. As expertly defended by Sherdang, and he'll win the free kick at the end of it too. You know, Akubo with his back to goal there. Deng managing to wrap his leg around, steal the ball away and win the free kick in the same motion. Raking crossfield ball from Tapa in the direction of Don Neon Guru. Well defended at the end of it though by Thomas Marco. You know, it's rising. Is Tapa as well. This looks good. Partnering Shikluna at the heart of that Mariners midfield. Here he is again. Andre Parks. Tapa. And Parks again. Shikluna has fashioned a couple of yards of space for himself here. Looks to stride around the challenge of Thomas Mako as well. Mako just dangling a leg out there. Shikluna winning the free kick. They want to get on the move quickly here through Busek. Shot is blocked again. And Busek slapping his thighs in frustration there. It's a very well worked quick free kick from the young Mariners. Here's Bielsek again, Mewitz. Bielsek. Brandman, oh, lovely flick to find Lucas Smythe. Cut back to Brandman. Neon Kuru drags it wide. Again, some fantastic little intricate pieces of interplay between the young Mariners there. Bielsek and Mewitz and Brandman and Smythe all combining. Neil Kuru maybe just overthought about the shot, certainly overcooked it at the end of it. Momentum perhaps swinging back the way of the hosts. Ryan Woods going long this time, not interested in playing out. Here's Kelshaw. Clipped in towards the back stick. Shoden completes the clearance. Only as far as Thomas Mucko. Hills unable to bustle their way through. And speaking of bustling, Thomas Marco has just bustled Neon Guru off that one. The Mariners, well, over-eager to get things on the move. And they've given Hills a chance here with Akubu. And again, Yu just dragging his shots wide of Dylan Pryak's Cullen's right hand up right there. Right, Cullen again half interested, just making sure he had his angles correct. I dare say, with a wingspan like that, he probably would have had it covered in any case. Didn't have the distribution to match, though. That's straight into touch. Under a little bit of pressure in fairness, though. Ten or so minutes to go until the interval here at Flint Park. We are one apiece, courtesy of goals from Anthony Frangi. Pulled back by Bailey Brantman. Hills on the attack now as well. They want a free kick, and they won't have it, as it's just a fantastic footballing challenge. Winning the ball, and now the Mariners, well, they can't play out again. Playing straight to the feet of Jamber, and now you! It is! Hills United, number nine! Who puts them back in front here at Bloom Park? It was a mistake from the young Mariners in playing their way out from the back, straight to the feet of former Mariner Brian Jamba. And you, Akobu, has restored Hills' advantage. It's 2-1. 
in favour of Hills United. Well, just as we thought, the young Mariners may have had momentum starting to swing in their favour. It's a ball out from the back that could be described as a coach killer, really. Will the Mariners respond? Back underway for the final stages of the first half of this one with Tapa. Paragali. Long ball into a half space for Lucas Smythe. Newitz. Bouncing ball. Difficult to control there. And Sunday Yona able to win that. Should be a Mariners throw. It's not... Despite the assertions of Mate Bjusek. Kel Shaw. Bit of a loose touch though. Bjusek able to get a toe on it. Shakluna. He's trying to find Smythe, but Monford rising. Bjusek turning around the... Or flicking one around the corner, I should say. Turning the challenge of Kel Shaw and, and Jamba. Feeling the after effects of the challenge from Kelshaw indeed. Wins the free kick for his trouble. Again, conversations to be had as to whether Shakluna or Bruntman will deliver this free kick. Be the in swinging right foot of Shikluna or the out swinger from Brantman. Again, Shikluna happy to leave this to Brantman. Up towards the edge of the area. It's comfortably cleared in the end though. They get a chance to deliver again. Tapper. Can't get it past Frangi and just goes through Frangi and his eagerness to try and win it back for his side as well. Pressure off. Hills United for the time being. Thomas Mako happy to just slow this down. No real urgency to get things back on the move here as they have that slender advantage. Five or six minutes to go until half time, plus any time added on. Here's Montford. Yona. Oh, just running out of real estate there, though, Sunday Yona. Dylan Pryor, Cullen, looking to switch things out to the right-hand side for Neon Kuru. Again, Mariners unable to advance past halfway. Here's Frangi. One way and the other. Still Frangi. Good looking delivery as well. Absolutely cannoning off the Mariners defenders' legs there and behind for yet another Hills United corner. I think it may have been Paragalli with the final touch. We're going to see a change here just before half time. It's going to be. Prayang Tapa, who takes his leave for the afternoon. Thought he was giving a fairly decent account of himself in that central midfield role next to Shikluna. Perhaps a bit of an injury or fitness concern over Prayang Tapa. He will be replaced by Tay Headley. Tay Headley, of course, is a bit more of an attacking-minded option there as well, so... Meanwhile, back to live action. Montford. Well, maybe not the most likely of targets there, Owen Montford. Or most likely of goal scorers, I should say. Oh, it's looking to combine with Brantman there. 
day at Flyers. Oh, it was a bit of a tired-looking pass from Brentman, to be honest, and maybe tired legs as well from Muir, who's had to get through a fairly sizable amount of work in this first half. Up and down this near touchline. Of course, he's had both Glenn Kelshaw and Sunday Yona to contend with. Here's Jamba. Yona again looking to make a run in behind off the ball. Meanwhile, Cher Deng just conceding the foul. little tug on the jersey there. Halting any further progress from Brian Jamba. And again, no real sort of urgency from Hills United to get back underway, of course. Danny Horst there just waving them on. Jamba it will be to deliver. Dylan Perrite Cullen's come a long way to claim that and claim it he does. Rolls one out for Shikluna. And he twisted and turned and looks for a teammate in the end, just going back to Parks and Shikluna again, Paragali. Have to be patient here, the Mariners, as I say that. They go long straight away to the chest of Smythe. But they've turned it over again in that front third. Jackson Brown looking to play one forward, easily cut out by Cho Deng. And here's Mewitz. Yusek. Brantman again dropping deep into his own half to try and get on the ball and have some more influence on the match here. Shikluna. Early touch for Headley. Falls kindly, or breaks kindly, I should say, for Paragali. And now Don Nionkuru. Tay Headley again. Chodeng striding forwards. Running out of room and all the way back to Dylan Pariah Cullen. No way through for the Mariners as it seems at the moment. And again, Brantman can't ride the challenge. And it will break out to this near touch line for Sunday Yolna. And looks to go around Cho Deng. Still going Yolna. Free chance for Akulu. Wonderful save from Pariah Cullen. Danger's not quite dealt with just yet though. Clipped in again by Frangi. Well, that will deal with the danger indeed. Not the finest piece of delivery from Anthony Frangi that you'll ever see. That would have been an absolute hammer blow for the young Mariners right on the stroke of half time. They're finding it difficult to break down this resolute Hills United side. Sets up very well. Well structured indeed. Put forward for Headley. We'll look to release Mewitz. Caleb Jackson Brown dropping into the defensive line. Clears it straight into the legs of Mewitz and out for a Hills throw. They look tired, they look frustrated. The Mariners. Meanwhile, Hills United seem to have their tails up at the moment. So we wait to see just how long we might have added on. Fourth official readying the board on the far touch line. Meanwhile, that's a good looking ball to release Lucas Smythe. He's got Monfort for company. Still going Smythe. Well, that's a side challenge from Owen Monfort and he's off. Well, no. Danny Horstead corrects himself. The red card was out very quickly. Danny Horstead realised that the colour was incorrect. Much to uh, the bemusement of many of those here in the stands at Bloom. Horstead waving off the red card in the end. Just a yellow for Owen Monfort. The free kick in a very dangerous position. Right on the stroke of half time for the Mariners. Now, amidst all that, I did admittedly miss the board going up on the far touch line, but I think we're going to see just the one minute of time added on. Bilsek or Brantman. 
Bradman to hang one up to the back post. It is very deep. It will be headed back across. It's the sea of white shirts there to deal with it. No one from the Mariners really trying to get on the end of it. They'll have another free kick, though, the Mariners, and maybe one final chance to whip something into the area. Okay, the board looks like it's going up now on that far touch line. Looks like we've got three minutes on the board there. So an extra couple of minutes for the Mariners to maybe get back on level pegging just on half time. Hung up towards Sherdang. He said it was Paragalli rising. Ryan Woods comes out to claim and does indeed this time. The board has indeed gone up. Yes, three minutes confirmed. The end of this first stanza. So we might be pretty close to being through that. Three minutes of time added on. Hills will just look to drive this one forwards. They'll soak up as much time as they like. Danny Horstead just giving them the quick hurry up there. It's a bit of an aerial mismatch. Frangie comfortably winning that over Tay Headley. Now Sunday Yona looks to release Glenn Kelshaw. <laughs> Comfortable enough for Dylan Pariah Cullen. Didn't take one and a half bites to really bring it under full control. Danny Horstead, just the check of the watch there. He's been summoned by the fourth official here. Is the referee. Lucas Vallela, the Mariners head coach, is making his feelings very strongly known about something. Looks like he's exchanging words here with Anthony Frangi after the challenge between he and uh, Tay Headley. Close consultation between the assistant referee, the fourth official, and the referee in the middle. We've already seen a red card rescinded in this one, of course. Danny Horstead pulling out the red card for Owen Montford before realising it was the incorrect colour, just a yellow. Meanwhile, Anthony Frangi is being summoned to the headmaster's office here. And he'll go into the book himself as well. Just a yellow card for Anthony Frangi. Both he and Owen Montford in the book. Anthony Frangi happy to try and explain his actions. So we'll see an extra few seconds added on indeed amidst all of this. Maybe just enough for the Mariners to launch something forward as they do here. Smythe, a little flick on. It was applauded by Brantman, but it didn't find him in the end. Here is Frangi. He scored the opener. And then found his way into the referee's notebook just a moment ago. Couldn't evade the challenge of Shikluna, and that will be the final action of the first stanza here at Plume. It was an opening fairly cagey opening 10 or so minutes before Anthony Frangi put Hills United ahead. They were pegged back by Bailey Brantman, the Mariners' first corner of the match. Proving telling. But it was, of course, Hills United number nine, Yu Akubo, who has given Hills the most slender of advantages here. It's been a bit of a ding-dong affair so far. Plenty of action to come. Still 45 minutes of football ahead of us here. In match week three of the New South Wales men's NPL competition. 
We'll be back in about 15 minutes to bring you all the action from the second stanza.
A very warm welcome back to the Central Coast here. Plume Park, of course, is the venue where Hills United currently hold a 2-1 advantage over the young Central Coast Mariners Academy. Pete Pryor with you. Absolute pleasure to have your company on YouTube as always. The second stanza of this one about to get underway. I'm sure there will be a couple of twists in the tail to come just yet. Hills United, good value for their lead. Nine shots in total, five on targets. Certainly dominated the corner count there as well. The Mariners scoring with their only shot on target of the half, from their only corner of the half as well, mind you. Bailey Brantman, the beneficiary of a bit of a uh, sloppy piece of goalkeeping, it must be said from Ryan Woods. <laughs> when we get back underway, it will be Hills United to recommence hostilities here in their change strip of all white with the stripe down the middle. Of course, the Mariners in their home kit of yellow and navy. A new home kit this week for the Mariners. The whistle blows and away we go for the second stanza of this one. Kel Shaw. Forward for Jamba. Flicked around the corner for Yona, who was incredibly lively in the first half. Set up the first goal which was duly dispatched by Anthony Frangi. We may have had a change in half-time as well for the young Mariners. We'll bring you news on that very shortly. Meanwhile, here's the Mariners' number two in Paragali. Good little flick from Neon Kuru to Fonte Headley, bursting into the area and cutting back for Smythe. It just eluded the touch of Ian Busek. We'll get a chance to recycle it here through Brantman. Again, a lively opening to the opening stages of this second stanza. A strike from Shakluna. It's comfortably blocked, turned into touch. We'll bring you news on that change now for the Mariners. Alex Guntunas, the number 33, has come on at centre-back. It looks like Andre Parks has taken his leave for the afternoon. Fizzed across the face of goal, this one, and behind it goes. Lucas Smythe, perhaps in a couple of, or in two minds, I should say. Wasn't sure if he wanted to try the shot from such an acute angle and maybe catch Ryan Wood out. Neon Kuru had a bit of space at the back post, but ball never arrived. Looks like Tay Headley will be playing a bit higher this half with Bailey Brantman. Dropping in is a number 10. Maybe a bit of a tactical switch from Lucas Valela as he looks to chase the game. Forward it comes towards Frangi. Now the two number 11s going at it. Neon Guru wins out momentarily. Curse of the commentator striking is Mako. Skipping past a couple of challenges. Good feet there from Frangi. He can't evade the attention of Paragali. Jamba able to pluck that one out of the sky. Lucas Smythe applying pressure. Hills United able to play through the press and they'll look to go long. Second ball falling at the feet of Jackson Brown. The Cats keep it under his spell. Paragalli happy to play back to Dylan Perriot-Cullen who made a 
A couple of outstanding saves in that first stanza as well. If it's right for him, the scoreline could be three or four in favour of Hills. As it remains, it is just the one goal separating these two sides here at Plume Park for match week three of New South Wales MPL men's competition. As we said, the Mariners still searching for their first point of the season. Hills United looking to bounce back from that 2-1 defeat at the hands of the Wanderers Academy last week, who will be in action themselves later on this afternoon. They did secure a shock victory in round one, though. Oh, how's the little bit of skill there from Brantman? Cheeky little nutmeg. He is forced all the way back to Pariah Cullen. And now, well, he can play anywhere, can Bailey Brantman. Now seemingly slotting in at centre half. Here he is. Guntunas, that's confidence or foolhardy. I'll let you decide. He's turned it over. Mewitz will recollect that. Brantman. Looks a sweet one up the field for Lucas Smythe. And now Marcel Bulsek. Sliding one in behind for Lucas Smythe. Cut back and the flag is up. Against Lucas Smythe. Just going a fraction of a second early there. That's good combination play as well between he and Bulsek. Tay Headley made the late run in as well. He was on the end of it. Mariners denied by the assistance on the near touchline's flag. I'll go again here. Shakluna. Over the top it goes for Neon Kuru. He's one on one with his defender. And oh, that's a fantastic bit of skill. And Neon Kuru is brought down. The Mariners fans are absolutely howling for a penalty. But on we go. Danny Horstead waving away those claims and Hills look to get forward immediately. Breaking into the area is Jackson Brown. Oh. Drifting just wide of Dylan Bright. Cullen's left hand upright. The Mariners fans here still incensed at the non-award of the penalty against Neon Kuru. Just looking at the replay there, it's it's partially obscured by the lighting pole in the middle of the field. So hard to say. But on we go. Brantman. Bulsek. Looks like the Mariners have switched to a 4-3-3 now. Neon Kuru, Headley and Lucas Smythe playing across the front three. Here's Headley who's drifted wide. Neon Kuru. Bulsek. Bit of space to work into the channel here, Bulsek. Doesn't measure the pass, though. It's easy for Isaac Hovar. Frangi. Immediately rolling off the challenge of Paragali. Immediate hand up in apology there, though, from Anthony Frangi. Just overcooking the pass a little bit, and Pariah Cullen able to pick that one up. Now, Brantman striding forward centrally is Bailey Brantman. Still going is Brantman as well. Looks to work it onto his left foot here. Runs out of room, but it will be Bulsen! Yeah! boy done good his first goal of the season ably assisted by Bailey Brantman Ryan Wood perhaps left unsighted there as he didn't move and Mato Bjorsek just placed that into the bottom left corner we're two apiece here at Plume very good finish indeed from Mato Bjorsek you can see why there is so much hype around the Canberra product here, formerly of Canberra, Croatia, of course. Had a brief taste of A-League action as well. He was on the bench for the Mariners Unite round fixture against Melbourne Victory. A 
very highly rated by those in the know down around Canberra. Of course, Russ Gibbs, one of those who I've spoken to on a few occasions about the prodigious talent that is Mate Bielsek. He's drawn the Mariners level here at Plume. Very much game on indeed. Here's Isaac Hovar for Hills. Frangi. Paragalli's touch tight there as well. And Lucas Shikluna is also maybe a touch too tight. Free kick going the way of Hills. Eager to get things back on the move through Jamber and Montford now. Jamber again. Yona. Live wire is Sunday Yona. Iwakopu. Shot is blocked by Gunturnus. Gonna come back for the free kick, it looks like there. Danny Horstead's spotted something. I'm not sure if he spotted something in back play. Get a look at the replay here on the monitors. That plume when we get a chance. May have been something in the phase of play in the build up there. Indeed, there was a bit of contact on Sunday Yona as he strode forward. So the referee has decided no advantage. They will get another opportunity from the free kick kit. He's clipped in centrally. Dylan Pariah Cullen able to claim. The flag was up in any case. There was a couple of offsides, a couple of Hills players. That just went a fraction of a second early. Shikluna striding forward. Now Mewitz and Shikluna combining again. Lucas Smythe. Neon Kuru in a half space. Dipped in towards the back stick. Yusek will be able to reload for the Mariners here. Brantman. Maybe half thought about the shot. Instead beats one, two, and the third one was just a task too many. Shikluna. Neon Kuru. Oh, that's a fantastic challenge to take it away from Don Neon Kuru. And now Frangi will have it back. It's Hovar with the initial challenge. Speaking of good challenges, Cher Deng timed that one to perfection. Still they come forward though, Hills United, Sunday Yona. Here he is again, Cher Deng, seemingly everywhere. For the Mariners, defending stoutly once again. Kubo. All the way back with Hovar now. Looks to link up with Caleb Jackson Brown. Fashions a couple of yards of space and manages to whip one out to the far touch line. Just ran a little bit away from Thomas Marco, who's come forwards, allowing Alex Gontunas to steal in there and fire that one. Yeah, it's a touch for another Hills United throw in. Here is Thomas Marco again. Had a couple for company. Ben Mewitt will clean up. Petkovsky. That's Tay Headley keeping him honest there. Frangi looking for the flick header. Came off his back more than anything. Able to retain possession. Well done, Anthony Frangi. Kubo. Caleb Jackson Brown now. And you, Akubo again. 
Paragali determined not to let them through, but will retain it here with Caleb Jackson-Brown and look to hang one up into the area. Ben Mewitz was rising to meet it. Bailey Brantman will complete the clearance. Hills United. Thomas Marco is going to take his lead, being replaced by Thomas Lopez. So Thomas for Thomas. <laughs> so we just await confirmation of this second change. It will be Anthony Frangi who opened the scoring for Hills. Doesn't get any less dangerous for the Mariners, though. Mitchell Smith is being introduced for the remaining half an hour or so here at Plume Park. Now, Mitchell Smith, of course, was the top goal scorer for Hills United last season in the League One men's competition. We're going to see a third change as well. So, triple change at the end of it all from Hills United. Sunday Yona, who has gotten through an absolute mountain of work, is being replaced by the number 10 in Jamal Belcardi. Well, the Mariners have decided to use this opportunity to make a couple of changes of their own. Mate Bjorsek, who levelled proceedings up just a moment ago, is being replaced by Yanni Nassis. In fairness, Mate Bjorsek is. Also himself completed no shortage of work this afternoon. Of course, the Mariners did have to make another change earlier in the first half. Prayag Tapa was just struggling a little bit, replaced by Tay Headley. That's seven or eight minutes before halftime, so they've made three changes themselves. Of course, one during the halftime window. Alex Guntunas coming on for Andre Parks. So three changes apiece, two goals apiece. 30 or so minutes to play. Here's an early touch for Jamal Belcardi. Couldn't quite bustle his way through. though for Hills if they can force the issue. Not quite though. Cho Deng again to the rescue. Headley looking to link up with Brandman there. Able to find a way through. Couple waiting in the area for the Mariners. One is Lucas Smythe if he can sort his feet out here. Lays it off for Shikluna. Deflection. Here's Narciss. Another opportunity for Narciss and the tap in potentially. No. I think it's Ryan Wood to the rescue at the end of all the chaos. Meanwhile, the Mariners will have a chance to recycle through Shikluna. Well, he can't force the pass, though. Oh, that's not the best challenge you'll ever see, though. Right on halfway. Danny Horstead, quick to get the yellow card out for Bailey Brandman there, and... No one with any real sort of argument there. Perhaps a bit of a striker's challenge from Brantman. Hills on with us here. And they'll have another free kick. In a fairly interesting sort of position there. Isaac Hovar, it was, who was dragged to the ground. Looks like the Mariners have 
Needs another change as well amidst all of that. And Ponsa Antwi, it looks like, has come on. This is hung up towards the back stick. Monford was lurking. Perhaps in an offside position, the f- assistant on the far touch line did half raise his flag. But Pariah Cullen comfortably able to claim under the pressure of Monfords. Leon Kuru going back to Cho Deng. Paragali. Mitchell Smith coming forward to keep Cho Deng honest. Here's Aunt Wee. Looks to link up with Neon Kuru. Petkovsky first on scene, though, ahead of Neon Kuru. Neon Kuru giving Petkovsky a couple of headaches there on that far touch line. They win the throw. Working those levers to hoist it long up the field. Straight back out into touch it goes. Hills kind of throwing away possession there. Hoisted long over the top. Cho Dang in a foot race. Winning out comfortably. Ahead of Mitchell Smith. Time is Belcardi coming forward to keep Dang honest and Dang cool as you like under pressure. But again, they can't really advance any further over halfway. Leon Kuru couldn't quite reel it in. Aren't we happy to watch that back to his goalkeeper? be too far away from the drinks break in the second half of course we had one in the first half so the regulations will generally mandate that one in the second half is required breeze has picked up a little bit here at plume park which has certainly taken a lot of the sting out of the air there's a decent amount of cloud cover now as well as aren't we was looking to break through on the far touch line well timed sliding challenge Kelshaw and Smythe again tussling for it. It's a real standout of his game. Lucas Smythe is defending from the front. Effective pressure. He's opposite number 10 there in Belcardi dropping deep. Here's Shikluna for the Mariners. Clips it wide in the direction of Neon Guru. And now Bailey Brantman looks to work his way into the area. Bailey Brantman clipped in near post. Comfortable for Ryan Woods. Wood this time going long. Flicked on by Lopez. Cho Deng is driving that upfield, but Nassus unable to control that. Really fizzed in at the legs of Nassus. Hovar hoisting it into the area. Had a clear again by Deng. Pops out kindly for Jamba, though. And Alex Contournas has had just about enough of that one, as yours truly just about gets a touch on the game ball as well. Fired into the stands. It was self-preservation from yours truly more than anything else, though, in all honesty. On we go. Here's Hova. Back with Petkovsky. Yeah. 
Jamba. Clipping one wide for the Kubo. Kelshaw now striding forwards. Smith. Just ran away from him there, Mitchell Smith. Game sort of has a feeling where just needs something to spark it back into life a little bit here. Don't think either side would be content really to settle for a point. As we said, you know, in spite of the fact that it is the Mariners still chasing their first point of the season. Here's Neon Kuru. Gets around. Montfort wants to go through the back of John Neon Kuru. And Danny Horst then, this time, yes, does point to the spot. Well, we said just a moment ago that this game was feeling like it needed something to spark it back into life. And I think we have it. Lucas Smythe went to the spots last week and converted against Apia Leichhardt. And he's got the chance to add a second for the season here. It's a wonderful ball. Take nothing away from that to pick out. The dangerous run of Don Nionkuru. He's been doing that all day. And this a chance for the Mariners to go ahead for the first time this afternoon. Yeah. Lucas Smythe, ice cold from the spots. Ryan Wood went the right way, plunging down low to his right, but hit with such power and precision from Lucas Smythe. And Wood, there's very little chance of being able to reach that. The Mariners do... Lead for the first time this afternoon. It is the Central Coast Mariners 3, Hills United 2. It's a topsy-turvy contest, I think. Now that it's 3-2, we can officially declare it a ding-dong affair. That will be the signal for both sides to take their second half drinks break. Lucas Smythe's second goal of the season here in round three. Both goals from the spot as well. <laughs> well, Hills United are wasting no time in their drinks break. They want to get on with things. back out from there. Drinks break already. Mariners slowly making their way back out as well. That's a familiar occurrence. It was as we said, Smythe from the spot last week, but it was also Neon Kuru who won the penalty last week as well against Apia Leichhardt. It's the first time this season, in fact, that the Mariners have found themselves ahead. Hills United get us back underway. No long immediately. Aren't we rising? Here's Neon Kuru again. Smythe. Shikluna. They'll work it wide now through Nassus. Oh, good looking reverse pass as well for Smythe. He's got a bit of a spring in his step now as well, Lucas Smythe. Here's... Brantman. I'll just go back and recycle it here through Shikluna. No way forwards. Guntunas. Neon Kuru. Here is the live wire of Neon Kuru. And again, through the back of Don Neon Kuru goes Glenn Kelshaw. And the Mariners have a set piece in a very intriguing sort of position if you're a Mariners fan.
They had a, an opportunity in the first half from a similar sort of position, which Shikluna left for Brantman to hang up to the back post instead of going for goal. It'll be interesting to see if they go for goal from this sort of range here. Tay Headley standing over this one. The angle probably favours the right footer. Brantman also there, and it will be Brantman! Just flashing over the crossbar of Ryan Wood's goal in the end. Well, that's goal from the penalty spot just moments ago. Has a sliding challenge from Brantman. He's been everywhere this afternoon. As we were saying, that goal from the penalty spot. Oh, back to live action again. Here's Tay Headley. Yeah! The Mariners go bang, bang indeed. Two goals in the space of a couple of minutes here at Bloom. And Tay Headley has given the Mariners a bit of a buffer here. When playing it out from the back goes wrong. Tay Headley, nothing wrong with the finish, making absolutely no mistake. The Mariners now hold a two-goal advantage. It is the Central Coast Mariners Academy 4, Hills United 2. Hills United seemingly shell-shocked. They look to go to their bench to try and rescue this one. Isaac Hovar and Owen Montford have come off. On comes Raina Smile. And Jordan Lane as well is on. So Hills United, in response, have emptied their bench. What can they conjure up here? Smith clipping one over the top. The number two! Jamal Belcardi. Has he pulled one back here? The Mariners are adamant they spotted a handball from Belcardi. It looks like it bounced up. And Danny Horstead, after consultation with the assistants on the far touchline, has indeed given the free kick the way of the Mariners. So it remains 4 2. Eagle Eyes official. On the far touchline, was in a good position to spot the handball from Jamal Belcardi, and the Mariners retain their two-goal buffer. Well, that certainly would have set up an absolutely grandstand finish here, had that counted. Is Neon Kuru? They couldn't reel it in. Caleb Jackson Brown. They want to get on with it here. Hills. Mitchell Smith couldn't quite link up with Belcardi on that occasion. Bailey Brantman. Good feats to find, aren't we? And now Neon Kuru, again brought down by Glenn Kelshaw. And he finds his way into the referee's notebook. That's Monfort, Kelshaw and Frangi, who's no longer on the pitch for Hills United. In the referee's notebook, Bailey Brantman as well for the Mariners. Just a professional foul, though, from Kelshaw. Shikloon has found a couple of yards of space here. Is Headley the latest goal scorer? Looking to link up again with Shikloon. Couldn't quite bust all their way through on that occasion. They'll reload through Paragalli. Trying to work their way inside the Mariners and pass was a bit of a loose one. Mitchell Smith easily able to steal in and Bailey Branton bringing him down just to allow his teammates to recover and get their shape back. Here's Petkovsky. Kubo. Petkovsky's continued his foray forward. Has Tay Headley for company. Perhaps a physical mismatch, but Tay Headley certainly winning out. 
He'll have the throw, though, Will Hills United. Thrown in by Petkovsky. Here's Belcardi. Out towards the far touchline, aren't we? Read it well. Before it got anywhere near Thomas Lopez, who looks like he's switched flanks since the introduction of Jordan Lane on this near touchline. Again, no way forward for Hills on this occasion, and the Mariners certainly looking the more dangerous of the two sides at the moment with Neon Kuru. Ah, oh, maybe curse of the commentator striking. Mitchell Smith was probably two or three metres offside there and was very well aware of that fact. Much to the chagrin of Luke Cassily on the Hills United bench. Smacks his hands together in frustration. There is a Mariners player down in back play. Rain a smile over to check on the well-being of Lucas Smythe, the Mariners number 10. Just one outfield player remaining on the bench for the Mariners. Looks like he's being readied at the moment as well. Jordan Small. Lucas Smythe receiving some treatments. He will need to leave the field of play. We'll await the board to go up to see who Jordan Small will be coming on for. Will it be Lucas Smythe or <laughs> perhaps Shikluna, who himself has been extraordinarily lively, buzzing around everywhere, everywhere centrally in any case. Smythe is back on for the time being. And immediately into the contest, rising for the aerial duel with Kelshaw. Falls kindly for Belcardi. And look to work it wide and back into the area where it comes in the direction of Smith. Chodang again clearing. No way through for Hills United. Cross is blocked by Antwi and the Mariners will look to get forward immediately. It's a great ball from Shikluna to find Yanni Nassis. Works it onto his left. Nassis, snapshot. Ryan Woods equal to it. Keeps it, keeps that deficit to two, I should say. And goes long, small, first to it. Sherdeng uses his body extremely well to shield it back to Dylan Pariah Cullen, though. Little plunge on the ball and... Soak up a few more seconds. Deng, again, immediately hassled by Smith. Aaron is still awaiting that change, or still looking to make that change, I should say. The board goes up, and indeed it will be Jordan Small, of course, the final outfield player remaining on the bench. Mariners number 11, Don Neonkuru. Again, takes his leave for the afternoon. And a sparkling performance from the youngster. Winning the penalty that Lucas Smythe duly dispatched to give the Mariners the lead for the first time this season. Shortly before Tay Headley extended that advantage. on the Nkuru receives the handshakes and plaudits from his coaches and teammates and some of the fans on this near touch line as well. Akubo. Oh, that's a great touch as well to find a teammates in Jordan Lane. My apologies, that was Jackson Brown, of course. Petkovsky had come forwards. Kelshaw. Belcardi. Good looking slide rule pass. A couple to aim for in the area. Paragalli gets there first and had to. So uh, four Hills United jerseys in the area awaiting the delivery. Paragalli equal to it, but they'll come again here through Belcardi. Straight into the legs of Guntunas. Smith couldn't quite get the shot away. Jackson Brown. 
Now Akubo! Scored from a similar sort of position in the first half. Also had one saved from a very similar position in the first half. Couldn't hit the target that time, though. And still it remains. The Mariners 4, Hills United 2. Bit of gamesmanship from Dylan Bright Cullen before the restart. Goes long. Shikluna. Goes all the way back to Dylan Puriah Cullen. And he'll go all the way forwards. Rain a smile rising to meet that. Looked on in the direction of Mitchell Smith. Again, another physical tussle between he and Sher Dang. Dang once again winning out. He's got to be in contention for the points in the 3 2 1s this afternoon. It's not my job to pick them, though. That's. Our esteemed journalist, Mitchell Rossi. As the Mariners work their way forwards on this near touchline now. Paragalli forward to take the throw, Headley. Bailey Brantman gets the return pass, looks for the... Flick on as well for Smythe, though. Couldn't quite get the accuracy, I should say. My apologies. Now Dang and Mitchell Smith again tussling for it. Fascinating battle between those two. Sure, Dang's just emerged from that holding his hamstring. Meanwhile, on the far touchline, the Mariners advance once again. And Ponsa Antley. Back with Bailey Brantman. The Mariners will very much hope that Sher Deng's okay. Both teams have emptied their benches. Meanwhile, they come again here. The Mariners, good save from Ryan Woods at the expense of another Mariners corner, though. Well, haven't they burst into life in this second half, the Mariners? That's a, a bit of a lull for the opening 15 minutes of the first stanza of this one. We were bemoaning the lack of... Real action before it really exploded into life with Don Leonkuru bursting into the area, winning the penalty. Before Tay Headley added a real exclamation point. Well, they look to perhaps add a fifth of the Mariners. It's whipped into the area, headed clear as far as I was going to say Paragalli. He didn't quite reach it though. Back with Cher Zhang from Antwi and wider will go to Guntunas. Now even wider with Shikluna striding forward. A bit of space to work with here, Shikluna. Well, oh, maybe too much space. Maybe he overthought things. Here comes Belcardi for Hills United looking to get forward quickly on the counter and, well, once again, maybe all too quickly. This is ball in the direction of Thomas Lopez. All too close to Pariah Cullen. And now Antwit prods it forward to Shikluna. Oh, that's a great ball for Yanni Nassis as well in a foot race here with Lane. Now Headley works onto his left foot, Headley. Well, it's a good clearance, I suppose. It's uh, not the finest. Efforts on goal, you might see from Tay Headley there. He's just got that all wrong. He can perhaps be forgiven for that one by his teammates, So, Of course, he did score the fourth goal. You can see his eyes light up from here when it opened up just then for him. Looking to add a second. Not quite, though. Just two or so minutes of regulation time here to go at Plume Park. I suggest that we may see 
three or four minutes of time added on there. A couple of stoppages, a penalty as well. Mariners might just look to manage this one out from here on in. Here's Brantman. Aren't we? Can't retain possession, though. Breaks for Smith, who... Again, he's eager to get things on the move. Thrown in in the direction of Lopez. And it's that man again, Chiu Deng. Pariah Cullen. Long ball upfield, searching for Nassus. Comfortable for Lane to just nod that one back to his goalkeeper. Smile, now wide it will go. Belcardi. Just dumped off it by Bailey Brantman. So he's going to get the full 90-plus minutes today, is Brantman. Gintunas. Oh, he's turned it over. It's hung up towards Akubo. Still Akubo. Oh, he's pulled one back late. And suddenly, it is very, very much game on here at Plume. Just 30 seconds of regulation time remaining. The crowd here shocked into stunned silence as Yu Akubo pokes that one home from close range. The board has gone up on the far touchline. We're going to see five minutes of time added on. I said we were maybe creeping towards a bit of a grandstand finish here. And it's very much all to play for for both of these sides. The Mariners looking for their first points of the season. Hills United looking to bounce back from that loss to the Wanderers Academy last week. To such an impressive, impressive performance in round one against Sydney Olympic. Long it goes. Belcardi. Firm challenge from Churdang. Rocketing off the legs of Belcardi and straight out for a Mariners throw which they will be in no hurry to take. Paragalli just checking the pressure of the ball, ensuring the PSI is up to regulation. Takes a touch off Lucas Smythe, though, and Hills will have it back. Jackson Brown, Jamba, Kelshaw, raking crossfield ball in the direction of Smith. Half-hearted appeals for handball. Danny Horstead, extremely uninterested. Lane, Belcardi, everyone behind the ball here for the Mariners. Smile. Jamba. Inside for Caleb Jackson Brown. Just about everyone forward here for Hills as well. Rainer Smile is the only one back and even he's up over halfway. Here's Belcardi. Still Belcardi clipped into the area. Down goes Smith. Referee says nothing doing. On we go. Brushing the side, netting the effort from you, Akubo. And my, my, my. Wasn't that well worked from Hills. Mitchell Smith feeling aggrieved. Danny Horstead didn't point to the spot, as does Luke Cassily in the dugout from the looks of it. Perhaps just going down a little bit too easily for the referee's liking. And Danny Horstead has just brandished the yellow card in the direction of Luke Cassily. Just a bit too vermin in his protests of the non awardal of the penalty. Lucas Valela showing off a bit of flair with the dummy there, letting that ball roll into the dugout. Kelshaw working the levers for the throw-in. Smith can't retain possession and the Mariners just hoist it all the way upfield. Ryan Wood, not interested in playing out whatsoever. He goes long. It's going to go kick to kick here. I'll tell you what... If Dylan Pariah Cullum wasn't six foot six, that might have skimmed off the surface and been one of the most freakish goals you'll ever see at NPL level. 
Smythe clipped on his way through. Much to the chagrin of the Hills United faithful. The Mariners will use the opportunity to soak up a few more valuable seconds through about three and a half minutes of time added on. Five minutes indicated. You might get a bit of extra time as well after the yellow card. They work it short into the area and it is! The Mariners five, Hills United three and that ices the game surely now for the Central Coast. Their first points of the season surely secured at the expense of Hills United. A well-worked free kick that caught Hills United napping. And sent the Mariners fans into absolute raptures. Looks like it was Lucas Smythe with the final touch on that one. He won the free kick, of course. The intelligence, the football IQ from Bailey Brantman to play the little slide rule ball in behind for Smythe, who made absolutely no mistake. Now, Hills United get forward immediately, looking for the immediate counter punch. The game where it has been really punch and counter punch all throughout the contest. The Mariners restored their two goal advantage just a moment ago. Only about 10 seconds of time. Added on of that five minutes that were indicated. Brantman again hoisted forwards towards Lucas Smythe. They've combined well today, have Brantman and Smythe. Raina Smile getting there first, sending it into touch. Smythe. Just leaving the throw in for a teammate here. And will be Smythe to receive the throw in and back into touch it goes. Thought we heard a bit of a phantom whistle there for a second. This time, well, in spite of the fact he was in his attacking third there, Lucas Smythe perhaps giving the Hills United defence a helping hand there, putting that one into touch for them. They'll look to launch it forward immediately, but it won't matter. Referee Danny Horstead says that will indeed be that here at Plume Park. The Mariners do have their first three points of the season, much to the delight of those home fans here on the Central Coast at the expense of Hills United. A thoroughly entertaining contest. It was Hills United who drew first blood through Anthony Frangi after some wonderful endeavour from Sunday Yona. The Mariners pulled one back from their first set piece, their only set piece of the half, their only shot on target of the first half as well through Bailey Brantman. Just before half time, Yu Akubo puts Hills United back ahead. The second half, it was all the Central Coast Mariners. It was the Central Coast Mariners show goals from the spot to Lucas Smythe, Mate Bulsek. And, of course, Tay Headley making it 4-2 in favour of the Mariners. Hills United pulled one back oh so late to set up a really grandstand finish. But Lucas Smythe made sure of the points in added time here at Bloom Park. It's been an absolute pleasure having your company this afternoon, of course, on behalf of myself, Pete Pryor, and everyone at Football New South Wales. Thank you all so much for your company this afternoon. But from me, it's bye for now.